Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. Once upon a time, there were tourist attraction places that people trooped to during holidays and vacations. These places served their purpose and eventually died off with time. So what really happened to them? In this video, I want to tell you about 10 tourist attraction places that no longer exist. Number 10. Royal Opera House of Valletta, Malta Like the operas that brought its audiences to tears, the story of the Royal Opera House of Valletta is fittingly tragic. Designed by Edward Middleton Barry in the 1860s, architect of the Royal Opera House in London's Covenant Garden, it was the crowning jewel of Malta's capital city for just six years before a fire gutted the interior. It was resurrected from the flames four years later, but tragedy struck again during World War II when the Royal Opera House received a direct hit from an aerial bomb. A few columns remain in place on the corner of Strada Real, forming the backdrop for the open-air Royal Piazza Theatre, launched within the ruins of the Royal Opera House in 2013. Number 9. The Pink and White Terraces, New Zealand Long before New Zealand discovered banging on about the Lord of the Rings films, people would flock to the pink and white terraces in the Bay of Plenty. Made of huge silica deposits, they clambered up hillsides rather like rice terraces. Intrepid 19th century tourists traveled around the world to visit New Zealand's famed pink and white terraces. By the 1880s, the pink and white silica terraces cascading down a hillside in the thermal Rotorua region had become known as the eighth wonder of the world and were New Zealand's most famous tourist attraction. The white terraces, known by Maori as Te Tarata, the tattooed rock, were the larger and more beautiful formation covering three hectares, seven acres, and descending 30 meters. The smaller pink terraces, Otu Kapuarangi, Fountain of the Clouded Sky, were where people went to bathe. In 1886, the pink and white terraces were destroyed when Mount Tarawera exploded, devastating most of the surrounding landscape and killing more than 150 people. Sadly, today, those early photographs and postcards are now all that visibly remain of the natural masterpiece that vanished in a massive volcanic eruption in 1886. Number 8. The Crystal Palace, London London doesn't have a great track record with fires, and that's what did in the Crystal Palace as well. Built out of cast iron and glass for the Great Exhibition in 1851 and covering a whopping 92,000 square meters, it had the greatest area covered by glass ever seen at the time. After the exhibition, it was moved from Hyde Park to a hill in South London, but it burned down in 1936 just as King Edward VIII was preparing to abdicate. Alternative, the National Center for the Performing Arts in Beijing is a humongous glass and titanium egg. Number 7. Original Pennsylvania Station, New York The current Pennsylvania Station may be a charmless catacomb of labyrinthine low-ceiling hallways, but New York's first Penn Station was a lavish masterpiece of the Beau art style. The original Pennsylvania Station was a dreamy piece of architecture, an airy Beau arts masterpiece. The original facility's domed ceilings, soared archways, and handsome columns welcomed more than 100 million passengers each year during the station's golden era in the mid-1940s. But by the end of the 1950s, the dawn of the jet age and the birth of the interstate highway system took a heavy toll on visitor numbers. The demolition of Penn Station in 1963 was not without controversy. The New York Times questioned at the time how the city would permit this monumental act of vandalism against one of the largest and finest landmarks of its age of Roman elegance. Within a decade of Penn Station's demolition, Grand Central Terminal was protected under New York City's New Landmarks Preservation Act. Number 6. Sutro Baths, San Francisco One former San Francisco mayor's slightly eccentric project led to the world's largest indoor swimming pool, opening in 1896. 
When Sutro Bats first opened to the public in 1894, the three-acre complex housed a staggering seven pools at varying temperatures under a massive glass enclosure with springboards, high dives, slides, and trapezes. The facility could hold as many as 10,000 people at a time and also had several non-aquatic attractions such as a natural history museum with Egyptian mummies and a sculpture gallery with artifacts from Mexico and China. With exceedingly high operational costs, the baths were never a commercially successful business, even after owners turned the pools into ice skating rinks during the Great Depression. The facility shut down for good in 1964 and was destroyed in a fire two years later. Its remains are now protected as part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Number 5. Porcelain Tower of Nanjing, China in an 1839 fairy tale called The Garden of Paradise, Hans Christian Andersen describes a teenager from East Wind who flies home from the East and tells his mother, I came back from China where I danced for a while around a tower of porcelain and rang all the bells. The Danish author's fable may be a fantasy, but the tower of porcelain bricks was no figment of his vivid imagination. Considered one of the seven wonders of the Middle Ages, the porcelain tower of Nanjing was built by the third emperor of the Ming dynasty in the early 15th century and rose from a 97-foot octagonal base to a height of 260 feet. This glossy nine-story pagoda soared above the south bank of the Yangtze River in Nanjing for more than four centuries before it was destroyed under the Taiping Rebellion in the 1850s. Its rubble remained relatively untouched until 2010 when a businessman donated $156 million, the largest single donation in Chinese history, to rebuild the medieval icon. Number 4. The Chakaltea Glacier, Bolivia the Chacaltea Glacier lies 17,400 feet up in the Andes and was once one of Bolivia's top tourist attractions, luring skiers the world over with the promise of tackling Earth's highest ski run. Thanks to global warming, however, the 18,000-year-old wonder has been reduced to a few lumps of unskiable ice that no visitor would go out of their way to see. In its prime, it had the first rope tow in South America, built in 1939, and the highest ski lodge in the world at an elevation greater than Everest Base Camp. Chocoltea was the closest ski area to the equator before it indefinitely closed in 2012. Known as the Bridge of Ice in the local Aymara language, Chocoltea is but one of many glaciers currently retreating toward almost certain oblivion. Number 3. Jonah's Tomb Iraq. Jonah's tomb in Mosul, Iraq is one of a series of attractions lost to war. The tomb, one of Iraq's iconic monuments, was revered by Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike. It was believed to be the final resting place of the biblical prophet Jonah, who got swallowed by a whale, and who warned the inhabitants of the Assyrian city Nineveh, now Mosul, that God would destroy them if they did not repent for their sins. The tomb was much more than a tourist destination. It was a constant, potent symbol. Militants with the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, planted explosives in July 2014 around Mosul's oldest mosque, which is traditionally held to be the burial place of Jonah the prophet. His tomb was a popular place of pilgrimage and joins a growing list of holy sites deemed idolatrous under the puritanical strain of Islam practiced by ISIS. Number 2. The Buddhas of Bamiyan, Afghanistan Back before Afghanistan turned into a grim, perma-fighting mess, the Buddhas of Bamiyan were one of the country's main drawcards. Built into a Bamiyan Valley cliff in the 6th century and standing at 35 and 53 meters tall respectively, the Buddhas managed to survive Genghis Khan, but not the Taliban. The Islamist fundamentalists decreed the Buddhas had to go in 2001 and brought them down with dynamite. They may eventually get rebuilt. Afghan groups are in talks with UNESCO. Alternative, the Laysan giant Buddha in western China does the rock-carved massive Buddha thing too. Number 1. Guaira Falls, Paraguay and Brazil a series of huge, furious, stunningly powerful waterfalls on the border between Paraguay and Brazil simply ceased to exist in 1982. 
Guaira Falls was easily the most powerful cataract in the world in terms of total volume, with 1.75 million cubic feet of water passing through each second. That's more than double the flow of Niagara Falls, and more than 12 times that of Victoria Falls. It contained 18 falls in total, with a drop of about 375 feet, and its deafening roar could be heard from up to 20 miles away. The Piranha River was dammed to create a reservoir, and the waterfalls were consumed by the Itaipu Dam. It was part of the world's largest hydroelectric project at the time, but locals reliant on the tourist trade were understandably furious. More than three decades have now passed since one of the world's greatest waterfalls was drowned to pave the way for a massive hydroelectric project. This natural wonder, lost to the world in 1982, once lured hordes of local and international tourists to the upper Piranha River at the Brazil-Paraguay border. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy the video, please let me know by clicking the like button. Do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.